Hey, you're back. Welcome back again to uh, some more chess. So in the last episode, we talked about pieces. We built out a lot of pieces. Uh, and in our testing our board, while we have uh, a basic board set up, it's spitting out in a really nasty way. So what we want to do in this episode is build a tool that will render our board into the terminal. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build a separate class for rendering our board. Um, our board class should really only be responsible for maintaining the internal representation and having a little bit of uh, validation logic. And so we're actually going to separate this out into a separate class. We're going to create a new class called um, maybe like board uh, like terminal um, or like CLI board renderer or something like that. Um, board render board render.rb. Like technically you could build renderers that would take in an instance of the board and render it as HTML or render it as like plain text for the terminal. Actually, that's what we should call it. Board uh, render plain text. Um, we'll just call it text. Board render render -er text. Okay, and so this is gonna be class board render -er text and it's responsible for knowing how to take in a board and render it as text in a way that we could like look at the text of it and know that we're talking about chess here. So we're going to initialize with an instance of the board class and we're going to say at board is equal to board and then we're going to have a method here called render and this is going to return the string representation of the board that is going to look nice Hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. So what we want to do is say maybe board. Um, yeah, we can make this a reader. So adder reader board. We want to say board dot grid dot. Um, let's see. So in this case, hmm. I'm wondering if we should just do like eight dot times do, and that'll give us the row, and then eight dot times do column just to like iterate over, because we know that this is going to be a chessboard. This would only work for chessboards. Um, otherwise, we would need to like reach into the board and figure out stuff about its grid. But I think we might be able to do this. So every time there's a new row, maybe we want to like put like um, a line or something. And then for each column in the row, we want to, I think, use print and we want to print out the value at that row and column. So now we want to say like board at the location row and column. And I I don't know. Let's just see. Uh, let's just see how that works. We might also need like after we've printed out all of those, we probably want like puts just like a normal new line. Um, so now we want to take this board render or text, come back over here instead of just printing out the grid for the board. We're going to initialize a new one of these with our board, and then we'll say renderer is this thing, and then we'll say renderer. Uh, let's uh, let's say uh, text board, and we'll say text board render, and we'll puts it out and just see what this looks like. It's a little bit of trial and error here. So pawn on line four, it's getting the wrong number of arguments. Oops. All right, run. Let's see what we get. Uninitialized constant because we haven't required it yet. Uh, so we're going to want to require everything that's that's in there. So I think we can actually do something like, um, oh gosh, I think it's like dir. Well, yeah. I, instead of like fighting with it, I think it's probably easiest just to like put it in the answer. Um, okay, but we're gonna need, yeah, we're gonna need like the rest of these. Rook, uh, knight, king, queen, uh, did we get them all? Bishop. Um, okay, so we've got bishop, board renderer. Uh, I'm gonna make these alphabetical order. So we want this one at the very top. The reason I'm doing alphabetical order is just so I can look at the file list on the left and really quickly read through and see that we've done all of these correctly. 
we can make this a little smaller. Then we've got our board. Then we've got our uh, king. Then knight. Then pawn. Then queen. Then rook. Okay, I think we're good. All right, let's see what we can do now. So we run this. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks pretty neat. Let's go back to our board class. And we want to actually make this 8 by 8 And uh, initially, let's just start off with like um, an array. So this is, this is interesting. So we can say array.new. And I think if we pass in 8, I think it'll create 8. So let's just let's actually do this um, IRB. So we can say array.new. And that'll give us back a new array. And if we say array.new and we pass in an element, that'll give us that many uh, items. And then I think we can pass this a block that will run for each element. And then I think we can also say array.new. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that'll give us an array of arrays, eight arrays of arrays, array.new. Um, and then uh, we can just assume that something else is setting it up. One thing that we might want to do is implement a factory method for initializing a board which would create a board and also set it up as like a brand new board. So let's do that now. I'm actually just gonna remove this. So a factory method is a class method that generally creates instances of those classes for you. So instead of calling like board.new, we'll call board.setupchess or something like, or board.startchess. Um, uh, and that will create a board and set it up for a, a new game of chess. So we could set it up for it's playing like eight queens or some other some other game. So we could say like def self dot um, start chess. And what this will do is it'll create a new instance of the board. So we can actually say like self dot new, um, and that'll be like our board. And then we want to uh, put all the pieces on the board. So I'm going to require all of the pieces, just the pieces, not the board itself and not this. So um, in Replit, you can hold down command and click and it'll give you like multiple cursors. That's a nice handy feature. So now we can say like board at, um, okay, how do we wanna do this? So we wanna, we wanna create eight pawns and eight, yeah, so eight pawns, we wanna say like eight dot times do, um, board at uh, one and then, so that'll be the column, one C is equal to pawn.new and we'll pass in black, I think. I believe this should create um, eight pawns and put them on the first row at each of the columns. Um, and then we can come back over to main and say like board.startchess and that should do some stuff and then give us back a board that is initialized. And all right, so board renderer line nine, eight times do, what is going on here? No implicit conversion of array into integer. Ah, so I think, that yeah so we didn't actually like populate the array here um in our board right we created eight new arrays but those arrays don't actually have elements yet so i think that's what we need to do is make it eight arrays with empty no okay let's see so board render text on line 12 for board render text line 12 printing the board of row and column so let's put um or p R and C and see where it's failing. Zero, zero. Okay. So board at zero, zero, we're getting back, huh? Implicit conversion of array into integer. So initialize with board. What's going on here? Ah, start chess. Okay, so board.start chess. This was a factory method. It's supposed to return the instance, and right now it's returning the array. So we need to actually say board at the end here. Um, okay, so we can say run. 
and oh, awesome. Okay, we're getting closer. We are definitely getting closer. Our board renderer, we don't need to print this out anymore. Instead, we just need to print the actual things that are there. And okay, fantastic. This is looking so good. Okay, so in addition to our like symbol that we're printing out, let's also print a space. So I'm just gonna use string interpolation here to put in the value of the, the piece that's at that position. And then I'm adding a space here. So it adds a space after it. Let's see if that's enough to give us some wiggle room. Okay. Oh, fantastic. All right. So we've got everything set up on line. Um, yep. On this first line. And then we have space, space. And then we're actually, I don't know where the other, why we're not printing the other lines. Oh, wow. Okay. So some, so something in the rendering here, I have to like scroll a little bit for that to work. Um, that's okay. All right, so if we go back to our board class, we want to do this same thing, um, but instead of line on, on line one, we want to put on line seven, I think. And this is going to be our white pieces. Um, I don't actually know for sure if like which side of the board it, they show up on or if that even matters. Um, but now we've got some white pieces at the bottom. That's fantastic. Actually, I think this is six, which is seven when we're zero indexed. So I think I think, yeah, I think we want six there. Okay, we are starting to see a chessboard take shape here, uh, folks. Okay, so this is super cool. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is, um, let's add the pawns and, or the rooks and knights and all that stuff. So, uh, okay, so let's see. So if we wanted to do board at uh, zero, zero, that is going to be a rook rook.new, and I think that's going to be black. And, um, okay, so we can do like, uh, yeah, so we want zero and seven dot each do, and that's going to be our row. Um, or maybe it doesn't matter. We can, we don't have to get too fancy. All right. So we've got a, we've got a rook on either end. So zero and seven should give us a rook. And then we also want the same thing, but with white ones here. Wait, zero, oops, I put the zero in the wrong spot. Zero and seven. And then down here, we're gonna have seven and zero and seven. I think that should give us the rooks in the right spots. Um, okay, sort of getting warmer. Uh, I think what's happening is that where there's no, where there's no piece here, we're only printing out one space instead of multiple spaces, which is, I think that's, um, I think that's all right. Let's go back to our board renderer. And if this is nil, um, yeah. So we might say like, if, if the position is nil at, uh, on the board here, so let's say piece is this if piece dot nil then we want to print like two spaces otherwise we'll print the whole thing um, and later on we can talk about the null object pattern which is helpful for things like this but for now we should be able to just get away with something simple like that so we run and now our rooks are in the right spots at least oh look on both ends okay fantastic all right let's keep going i think we also want to put like print a full line at the very bottom just to like give the board a little bit more uh, dimension. All right, so we go back to our board here and we're still sort of setting things up. Um, what I was thinking of doing was like saying like zero comma black and seven comma white dot each do and then what we can do is destructure each of those arrays. So we're going to iterate over each of these subarrays, and we're going to be emitted like this array element. But what we can do is if we put inside of parentheses, we can destructure that array into the like row and color. Um, and I'm going to move this over a bit since we don't need too much space here. And what that does is that buys us this row, right? And then this is the color. And I think that will make it so that we only have to do this like that. And if we run it again, I believe, okay, cool. We're showing up in the same spots. So this should totally work. And I think we can iterate just like this 
to create the other pieces also. So what's one in from the rook? I think that's the, the knight. So we'll copy these and paste them. And I think we want to go one and six. And these are going to be knight. Queen and the queen. Okay, so the king and the king. All right, so they're facing each other. I don't know if there's like technical reasons why they need to be like right next to each other. Um, but at this point, we now have a factory method that creates a new instance of the board. So calling self.new is creating a new instance of the board. So now, um, because we started the method with self dot, that means that it's available on the class level. So back here, we can call board dot start chess instead of board dot new, right? So where we have board renderer dot text dot new that initializes an instance, but um, dot new is not really a factory method. It's just like the built-in constructor uh, constructor function. And so here we created a factory method that would start our board with the default configuration for chess. Now, if we wanted to, we could come back here and create another start like constructor function that we are a factory function, factory method, factory function, whatever, <laughs> for creating a board that just had like one element on it or whatever. Um, what's nice about this is that when the board is created, it's empty. It doesn't have anything on it. It's just nil, right? And so technically, if we wanted to, we could say board.new and this would just create an empty board for us. And if we wanted to, then we could just place one piece in one specific position and feel like play around with it and see where it goes uh, without needing to like change the internals of the board to like delete all the pieces or remove all the pieces or make moves. So start chess is a factory method on the board class, which is super helpful for rendering out or like setting up the board. And um, then we created this board renderer that takes in an instance of the board and helps us print it out. So those are kind of the two things that I wanted to cover in this episode. Uh, hopefully that's useful. And uh, yeah, th these factory methods are, are really handy for constructing or doing like setup stuff that you might need and especially useful if you wanted to create like separate, several different ways of constructing instances. Um, yep, so that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, um, great, awesome. If you, if you give it a thumbs up, then other folks will be able to find it and uh, I'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, otherwise I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.